3520 Broadway and 1500 North 12th Street. The Liquor Booth, where it's always happy hour. Hey, everybody. Welcome to The Daily Muddy. Uh, today joining me, my friend Holly Shell. How are you, Holly? I'm great. How are you today? Fantastic. So uh, she brought a fancy gift, oh. <laughs> which I'm using, right? And I always say, you don't have to bring gifts when you're on this show, but those- You really should. But those who do become my favorite guests. Right. So welcome to the club. <laughs> Uh, and so before we before we hit uh, play on the cameras, we were talking a little bit off scene about this big deal that's coming up. So before right. we get to that, uh, you're wearing the shirt. You you are the essence of be like grace. Oh and I gosh, think everyone Thank you. knows that. Um, everyone's heard it. If you haven't, you're probably living under a rock because it's been <laughs> everywhere. Right. For, for years now, right? Right. We are coming up on Grace's fourth heavenly anniversary. Mm -hmm. um, and we have been incredibly blessed as a family and really, I think, as a community right. um, to be so shown so much support um, for really just what a quiet 15-year-old girl was trying to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, we really didn't know Grace's story until she was no longer here to tell it. And, you know, then... The hashtag started three days after her passing, and then hundreds and then thousands of messages from people all over. And I mean, literally all over. A girl from Germany wow. had made a connection with Grace through social media. Yeah. Um, and were telling us stories of her encouragement, things she had done for them. Um, and really, that was the spark that kind of just lit our entire flame. Um, and our family thought, we can't let her story go quietly into the night. And so then, of course, talks of a foundation started because we were very blessed with a lot of financial help when Grace passed away for funeral expenses and hospital bills, because those are things that are unfortunately a bystander of a loss yeah. and uh, things people don't think about um, that families will be struggling with after the reality kind of sets in. And we thought we need to take this money and do something with it. And so our foundation started uh, roughly eight months after Grace passed away. Um, and since then, our goal has really just been to spread kindness to others. And it comes in a lot of different forms. I mean, sometimes it's just constantly connecting with them, letting them know somebody's here. It might not be financial help. That might not be what they need from us. Um, but then it's also, you know, what other nonprofits can we support? You know, the Quincy Children's Museum is a beautiful one yeah. that we can give to. And then those children then, even if they don't know it, have a piece of our daughter to travel with them right. in our donations. Families who are also struggling with what we have. We know there was a huge loss in, you know, Shelby County recently of the three girls. And in Rushville, you know, I mean, tragedy, unfortunately, never has a pause button. Right. And so for us to be able to do those things um, and, you know, four years later, you know, we're very proud to say, you know, we've donated over $60,000 um, to people throughout the tri-states. Um, and, you know, we've been, people have taken the hashtag to every state in the U.S. And now we're at 32 other countries yeah. that people have either wore the hashtag, taken bracelets, you know, traveled with her. So the really yeah. awesome part about our story is, you know, Grace's chapters of her book just continue and continue, yeah. and we just keep adding new people to it. So we're, we're very blessed, and um, I'm, I'm proud to be able to sit here and talk to you about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Very incredible. Uh, let's, right, we need to take a breath, because as yes. I'm listening to you, I'm thinking, <laughs> keep it together, Ash, keep it together. <laughs> Uh, because, you know, it is incredible. Uh, it's unfortunate that it's necessary, but right. it is incredible that um, the span, the reach of what you've been able to accomplish and Grace has been able to accomplish, you know, even after she's passed right. is, I mean, something that I think everybody probably would hope for their loved one who, who's, who's, Absolutely. who's passed away, right? So uh, everything that you said, you said it so beautifully. Um, and I'm, I'm proud of you for being able to say it with that. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm like, okay, Ashley, keep it together because she's not even crying, right? So, um, no, but it is very touching. It's very, it's very emotional. Uh, and the work that you do to continue, not just you, but the community and, and everyone, um, everyone who believes in, in your mission, right. it, it really is just outstanding. So, um, speaking of outstanding, one of the uh, events that you have coming up that will benefit um, the Be Like Grace Foundation is huge. It is. It's I didn't realize how huge it was. So I, as soon as I saw the name, I'm like, well, that 
I know that name. You know that name. I know right? that name, right? <laughs> so then I was Googling and I was like, holy smokes, this is going to be outstanding. Okay, right. so I'll let you tell us about it. Right. Um, we are, I mean, again, in, incredibly humbled that Colin Ray even agreed to come. I mean, he is a legendary artist. You know, I mean, I can remember as a kid in the 80s, my mom and aunts and uncles playing his music and, you know, we would dance to it and but you don't really think about who he is as a person, right. you know? And um, when we made the connection with him, which was honestly accidental. I was going to ask how you did that. It was absolutely yeah. accidental. Um, I wasn't actually looking. I mean, we are a tri-state foundation, right? Mm -hmm. I I try to remember that we're only as big as our britches can fit. Right. So um, I was really just trying to look for an up and coming artist, somebody like that, um, that we could work with. Um, and I made connections um, with a manager and it just so happened that he manages Colin Ray. And he took time, his name is Kevin, he took time to read our story, learn about our story. And he said, this is not who you need. I'm gonna contact Colin. And I thought, there is no way that he's gonna say yes, no way. And um, we had sent an offer off and he actually accepted ours and rejected two other bigger ones um, because he also read of our story and thought, you know, this is why he got into the music business is yeah. to have the capability to do this. And we're, you know, it's awesome. The Oakley Lindsay Center hosts us every year. So, you know, the concert's a thing that nobody has to worry about the weather. We don't have to worry about heat or right. cold or rain. It's all indoors. Um, we're, we have awesome plat daddy's going to provide all of our food this year um little intrinsic treats who's an up-and-coming bakery uh -huh. i mean she's everywhere um they're going to do all of our desserts um it's it's just going to be a night to just celebrate who we are as a as a community mm -hmm. you know i mean not only to raise money for the foundation i mean that's a great important part sure. but you know for our, our family my husband and our children we host the event so people can gather and celebrate each other. You right. know, you can make new connections with new people you've never met because you're going to be sitting by them. Right. And hopefully we can just spread the message in that sort of capacity through one another. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And I, I think it helps when you hold events like this to remind everybody of the community aspect, the support aspect, because, you know, of course, you want um, you want to give back to the foundation, but you also want to encourage, you know, especially in times like this the the village the foundation right, right? the community right the, um yeah the good stuff the good stuff yeah, the yeah. Good stuff. and we all need the good stuff <laughs> oh amen sister so colin ray is um a very well-known uh, musical talent and he's coming to quincy and he's, and he's coming to the oakley lindsay center and what day and what time and how do people get tickets <laughs> perfect yeah. um september 14th he'll be here um our doors for our vip um are gonna open at five o'clock so okay. they're gonna get early entry um because we're gonna have silent live auction basket raffles so they're gonna get to get in there get get in there early um we'll also of course have our new and um, reliable Be Like Grace stuff. Um, and Colin's gonna have a bunch of stuff of his own there as well. Um, and not to mention Blacktop South, our, one of our local artists is also oh, going to be that. performing. I know, well, they're we great. gotta mention them for they're sure. They're great, yes, yes, they are great. Um, and so we're gonna just have a whole bunch of different aspects. So the doors will open at five. General admission can come in at seven. Colin's gonna take the stage at 7.30. Um, he'll be performing for an hour and a half for us. Um, you know, it's. The way I look at it is his concert's going to be very up close and intimate. Yeah. And um, you can't not sing to his music. Yeah. It's so classic and it's so tried and true. So, yeah. 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 It's going to be a great <laughs> night. Okay. So if uh, people want tickets, where do they go? Or how do they get registered? Or Sure. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So always on our website. Um, you can just go to www.belightgrace.com. Um, we'll have all of the information. We've got several different options depending on what fits for people's budget. Sure. Um, so we've got VIP, which is $50, and that includes table seating and a full meal. Okay. Um, we also have just the general $30 admission just to come for the concert. 
um, and of course fellowship. Mm -hmm. And then um, you can also become a table sponsor of eight, um, and that'll include, of course, all the VIP goodies, and then everybody gets a good, like a little treat from okay. Be Light Grace. Yeah. Um, and those sponsorships are five hundred dollars per table. Um, and we're only going to sell fifteen. Um, so, however many years Grace was here on Earth, that's how many we're going to do. Um, so those are kind of going quickly I was now. Say, yeah, I bet those are. Yes. Yeah. Um, and it's that's awesome. That's fantastic. Um, and then we're also going to sell tickets at the Adams County Fair this year. Um, and we'll be doing that the Friday and Saturday of the fair in the evening. Okay. So during the bull riding and then the general concert, we'll have them on site at the fairgrounds. Um, and then in August, we're also going to do another pop-up at Farm and Home Supply if people want to buy them directly from sure, us. Sure, sure. Excellent. So lots of opportunities, um, lots of events happening um, that night. And yeah, of course, for an amazing cause. Thank you. Uh, keep doing what you're doing. You're doing amazing things. I am always uh, impressed by the reach. Uh, I'm not surprised by it, but I am impressed. And I hope uh, Grace's message continues to to spread. And I hope you continue doing the work that you do because I think that, yeah, it's, it's, it is about her. It's about the foundation, but it's also about community and, and the love and support we can all give to one another, right? Amen. There yeah. You go. Amen. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, go support the foundation and have a great, great night doing it, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's going to be fun. All right. Coming up next, Coffee Talk with Britt B. and Ash C. Stay tuned. The Tower, a great place to meet and eat. But did you know the Tower has one of the finest drink selections in our area? Along with its incredible Mexican menu, the Tower specializes in tequilas for every taste. Names like Patron, Cabo Wabo, and Hornitos. And don't forget the margaritas. On Mondays and Tuesdays, stop by and pick up a single topping pizza and get Tower Margaritas to go. Enjoy the Tower at home or in our dining room, bar area, or the Tower's signature climate-controlled porch. The Tower Pizza and Mexican in Quincy. Instant Replay is your local sports bar. With 18 big screen TVs, we have all the sports packages from college games to pro games. We offer daily drink specials and come check out the bullpen, our newly renovated beer garden. Instant Replay, 2739 Chestnut in Quincy. Welcome to the Abbey, a Quincy tradition. With six big screens, a new larger kitchen, and now more seating capacity, the Abbey is the place to be before, during, and after the big game. Come enjoy fan favorite Abbey Tizers, steaks, burgers, and a variety of daily food and drink specials. Can't join us? Carry out is available too. Now with a convenient drive up window to better serve you. 1736 Spring in Quincy. Opens at 3 p.m. Tuesday through Sunday. Come join all your friends at the Abbey, a Quincy tradition. Kelly's has been a fun place to eat and drink in Quincy since 1982. A fun and friendly atmosphere, food with flavor, homemade cinnamon rolls, and famous cheese soup. The best menu in town. Kelly's 2902 Broadway, Quincy. The Liquor Booth is your home for a huge selection of beer, wine, and spirits. The Liquor Booth has two locations in Quincy, 3520 Broadway and 1500 North 12th Street. The Liquor Booth, where it's always happy hour. Are you looking for the perfect venue for your next special event? Check out Utopia Event Center. Utopia has a large banquet room and an awesome bar area, perfect for anything from birthday parties to formal corporate meetings. It also offers a photo booth, stage for a DJ or a live band, and a fully stocked bar, all for only $300. Check us out at utopiaeventcenter.com or call Barn at 217-430-6559 for more information. Utopia Event Center, 900 North 12th Street in Quincy. And welcome back. Now it's time for Coffee, Coffee Talk. Talk. And today um, we have very special uh, mugs, Be Like Grace, of course. Yeah. Uh, but inside here, of course, our favorite coffee, EFB. Thank you to Thank our you. sponsors. Um, best coffee. Yeah. Hands down. Yeah. Love it. There's a new place where you can... Um, get that coffee too you know how like efb yeah, is yeah, a roastery yeah. uh -huh. there's a new place in town where um they serve e efb coffee it's called playgrounds it's out on the east Ooh, side i've heard of this yeah it's like a little cafe that is a it's a place also where you can bring your small children to play yes. um different developmental toys yeah, yeah i love it's it really neat i think it's a really cool concept mm -hmm. um i have yet to visit is it open Yep, it's open now. Yep. Okay, they've been open uh, for like two weeks, and they're running a special right now, um, I believe, for those play passes. Okay, but if you you know are just out on the east side and you want some locally brewed coffee, then yeah. 
Stop and some place to take your kids because I've always said that that we need somewhere that mm-hmm. you know you can go and kind of enjoy your time and I think people are listening because with Crazy Town and now the playgrounds oh and, yeah yeah the Quincy Museum I, or the Children's Museum I think we're getting more and more and I think that's really really cool yep um, speaking of more and more you got uh, a full dose of fun recently right we were just on a break yeah it's been welcome a while. back I know I missed you I missed you too yeah but it looked like I was totally stalking your snaps and it looked like you guys were having an amazing time we did and took advantage full advantage of everything Chicago yes. has to offer yeah we mm-hmm. went to Chicago for a couple of days um, most of the vacation was a staycation but it was lovely yeah and Chicago, yeah. We did all the touristy things. You did all the things. I saw it. And it was – so Mike uh, doesn't really walk. Mike is my husband. He doesn't really walk. Um, he, we run. We run. Oh, yeah. He's got a fast pace. Yes. Yeah. I've, yeah. I've so it's like that. we have to be at the Art Institute at this time. Yeah. And there was the bean. I was like, but we have to stop at the bean. Got to stop at the bean. For Four beans. beans. That's yeah. what we call my daughter. Yeah. So that was epic. Got an epic picture. I saw it. It was awesome. I, I got out of the itinerary for a second. It was fun. That was No, good. it was really fun. It was very informative. He did a great job planning, like, the trip and making sure we did all the things. Yeah. And some of the things that, I mean, I didn't even want to do, which was the Willis Tower, Sears Tower. It's cool. The looking out. It's not uh, my favorite. I cool. have an extreme fear of heights. You and and I did it. Sister. And he goes, how did you do it? And I go, just looked at my focal point the whole time. Yeah. Yeah, you're like... Yep. Can't see. Don't I look can't down. See. Don't look down. Don't look down. But it is cool. I'm glad you got to experience all of that. My favorite part of Chicago, though, was the architectural tour. It's, it's, a, favorite. it's a boat tour. Yeah. So, like, nerdy, I guess. But No, it's not. No. When I first went on, I thought it was a total dork show. <laughs> but the tour guide made it so interesting. Yes. So informative. And you're looking around, and it really is, even if you're not interested in um, the art of architecture, mm-hmm. It's incredible. There's so many stories along the way. It's incredible. Yeah. And it's beautiful. And generally, you know, even if it's warmer, the breeze, mm-hmm. it's just, a, yeah, it's it's beautiful. They yeah. offer drinks. It's great. Perfect. Uh, but the tour guide this time, like you said, the tour guide is always great. Yeah. Like, they just make the tour happen. Yep. One of the things he said was that, I don't know if it was the father of Chicago, it was one of the major, major uh architectures i don't know who i missed the name but i i remembered the quote which was beauty inspires civility and progress by being surrounded by beauty people become better versions of themselves and this was the topic you know of the whole cruise and it just brought to light things like well first of all i was like hey this is chicago like you know your your crime rates yeah. and whatever you're beautiful, or like, but you got some issues yes. too so is that really true I'm, yeah. I'm not sure but then i was thinking about how it applies to quincy and i think you know like we've been saying from the get-go um we want to invest in quincy we want to make the people of quincy happy and i think by doing that is actually beautifying it yeah and i i mean it <sighs> Instead of doing that, we're not always focusing on the actual beautifying it. We're always focusing on the wanting more and more and more. Gross. And like, yes, mm-hmm. the, the the tour guide kind of alluded to, yeah, we you need to make big jumps and big, big changes to have that beauty. But as a small, you know, we are, we're not little Chicago, but you know no. how people yeah, say yeah, that. Yeah. It's like yeah. we are but minuscule size to Chicago. Yeah. So maybe that is the focus that we should I think small changes can make a big impact. Uh, And there definitely are certain places like we were talking about, um, you know, especially uh, focal points when you're entering, exiting, whichever, whatever you're looking at to Quincy that even if we don't have our shit together, we can purvey that, Mm -hmm. you know, through the, through beautification, small things. Uh, You were talking about the... The entrance coming into Quincy. the median. Yeah, your daughter, I know you posted that thing about... Guess what my daughters are looking out, at? Out of the mouths of babes. Yeah. No, she said it looks like murders happen there. And well, she was referring to the welcome abandoned in. welcome in. Yeah. But I mean. She doesn't know that. She doesn't know what that is or what the story is. That was just her perception. And she's nine, guys. Yeah. So if a nine-year-old thinks that murders are happening there, I wonder what I visitors think. You know think. what? They probably <laughs> Well, I wasn't going to say, I wasn't going to say, I hate to say, but you may be right, uh, because I don't really know. But yeah. but if a nine-year-old thinks that, 
coming in to Quincy from, you know, the bridge, I'm wondering what visitors who've never been here before think, because when you're coming across the bridge, it kind of looks pretty neat. You know, you're looking at the riverfront. Um, there are, you know, some focal points that make it look cool. There are some other ones that are not so cool. But then the one of the first things you see when you cross is that shithole yeah right and Which i don't, I don't know how are. much the city can do about that right now because it's all in like a pro like is it still well i i don't know exactly i don't think it is i think it's time to tear it down maybe somebody can tell us the the truth on it but which takes money it but does. then just like okay smaller things the, yeah, median, the median right there oh yeah um mm -hmm. that is accounted for it's something that should be taken care of we it's part of the cbd which is a beautification development or project. You know, our taxes pay for that. It used to be really pretty, didn't it? Had flowers it had the and queue. like a queue. Yeah, we've, we've established this. But yeah, that's like, I'm talking just something small mm -hmm. and right there just caring about the median, which again, it is part of a contract, those first three medians. Yeah. Why are they, why do they look like this? And then Chicago, downtown Chicago has the most beautiful yeah. plants and like the big, you know, this, the large scale of it. Yeah. Now, I understand your property taxes are probably more there and stuff yeah. like that. But large scale, small scale. Yeah. Yeah. No, Little I agree. things. And it is. And it just would improve people's perception even. Yeah. And then, or their you know, perception is, you know, I forget what it is, but like what you perceive is kind of what you believe, right? So if it's beautiful, kind of like Chicago, even though they have uh, incredible crime rates. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, when people's people still go to Chicago because it is beautiful. Mm -hmm. So let's beautify a little if bit. If we're wanting to attract tourists. Yeah. We got to focus on the face of, yeah. of Quincy, which is what I kind of look at as, you know, when you call a company and the first person you talk to kind of creates that perception, whether good or bad, on, on how you feel about what your experience is about to be or the company in general. We should definitely focus on the face of Quincy. Mm -hmm. And that is both, you know, of course, the people who represent Quincy, uh, but also, yeah, just the the visual aspect of yeah. it. And I think we, we have some work to do there. And I know I just said tourists, but I mean, again, my main point is always the Quincyans here. Sure. That would improve and make, you know, them feel good about themselves. Yeah. Well, it's like when you're living in a uh, cluttered home, this has become more and more um, of, a, of a popular study. Clutter creates anxiety. Clutter creates stress. If we can this get this is rid my of, closet. Yeah, right. This is. <laughs> I'm not listen, joking. I'm telling you. So I've been trying to instill that in my kiddos. Now I'm like, you know, you just feel better in a clean environment. Mm -hmm. You just feel better. Uh, so there is something to be said for that. I don't know how far it would translate um, and to whom, but I think it is definitely worth a shot. And it can't be that expensive, right? Well, again, we're already paying for it. And like um, at the city council meeting last night, I think uh, Steve Homan stood up and was talking about. Uh, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. those things yeah. so it's not like our city council members aren't listening i hope that they're not not listening because of the people that it's coming from yeah like if you think of myself and steve and you or all of us as naysayers mm -hmm. if it's just going over your head uh -huh. like i think the people really feel compelled about this so yeah. i i don't know i would like to see something done yeah even and if you don't even if you i don't know even if you don't think it's important right off the cuff give it some time let it sink in think about how we can actually take action or use the existing um yeah buckets that are supposed to be there for this mm -hmm. i think you can we could probably get a committee together guys yeah yeah okay anyway so yeah that brings us to the next thing which was at city council mm -hmm. um what was done was it's the end of a chapter for yeah. us the 54th street development um they came to a resolution it's a resolution outside of what the original proposed uh deal was which it was a one million dollar tax abatement yep and now it is still a one million dollar tax abatement but it's through the what they're adding a one percent sales tax now if anybody watched the special where we had the panel I believe the um, the people that were against it mm -hmm. the said, yeah, the opposed said that, you know, this is the lesser of the two evils. Like we, again, I don't think we really want it is what they said, but um, if they had to take it, that would be adding a 1% tax where, so the four restaurants and the truck stop 
that's mm-hmm. going to come in has to add an extra 1% to their sales. And yeah. they have to agree to that. So the developer has to find tenants that are going to agree to that too. Right, right. This is um, modeled after the Midtown Business District, the the Tom Marks District, you know, the thing uh-huh. that we were talking about, mm-hmm. um, which that spans, I believe, on I, not quite sure on both sides of Broadway. It might just be the north side, but it's an area. Yeah. So like what we were territory. Yeah. Yeah. What we were discussing earlier, I'm not sure what the territory is now. So that would be the questions that I have. I I do think this is um, swallowable as far as a deal. Um, (laughs) I don't know. That's probably a terrible choice of words, but yeah, listen, (laughs) swallow it. Okay. So, uh, you know, if it is, so the, the verbiage used to describe uh, the sales tax deal is basically any business in this uh, development territory. Now, I don't know if that is just in his development or if that encompasses more uh, of a territory outside of that. So that would be one question I have, because if it is outside of that territory that he's planning on developing, um, does it include existing businesses? It's a really good question. Right? And if not, is it only for new businesses, which again would be a little more swallowable, right? Because then you know what you're getting into. Mm-hmm. You don't have something that's been established and now all of a sudden, great, now I got to pass on another 1% because some of those businesses have already gotten hit with the yeah. food and bev tax, which 1% doesn't seem like a lot, but when you're passing it on yes. to your people, uh, your your patrons, it, it becomes a little bit of a challenge, right? Uh, so those would be two questions. Where's the territory outline? Um, who's included in this? And then the third would be, and I know, you know, our treasurer has, he knows what he's doing. So this is probably. Congratulations on the new position. Right. That was also last night. Yeah. City Council. Yes. Mr. Kelly Mr. Stepask. Mr. Kelly Stepaski, one of my favorite people. Uh, and cousin. Yeah. <laughs> Who am I not related to anymore? But uh, no, so I know that he has, uh, he knows what he's doing. He has, um, you know, but my question would be on a grander scale of, and probably the answer is out there, but I, I need to go look for it. Once we create these deals for these different districts, how are the buckets, um, you know, how are we making sure that this money is going to the right bucket and what's coming in and what's going out are only using the funds that are appropriated to them? Uh, I know that there's probably some, you know, a, oh, there's many like, processes yeah. in place, but that's where my business head goes is, you know, the checks and balances to make sure this is actually happening and that we're not going to eventually come back and be like, well, you know, we could only do so much with this amount of mm-hmm. sale because let's say, you know, those, we can't get businesses to do the 1%. Is he just not going to be able to do the development or are we going to be like, well, here's this, but now we can't pay you back and then what's going to come next? So, you know, kind of like what the questions that yeah. are, Right now, it's projected to collect one hundred seventy-five thousand a year annually. So okay. this is going to take a little bit longer yeah. than the original, I think. Which I assume deal. he's okay with. Yeah. Okay. I mean, him he's being still, is it Jim Otis? Yes. Yeah. He's still in the deal, I believe. Yeah. Okay. And well, then, uh, lastly, it was just it was passed last night, eight to five. Um, the opposed were Bergman, Mays, Farhab, Bauer, mm-hmm. and Sasson. Okay. And then, uh, Bauer's main comment was why and why mm-hmm. the why for new development mm-hmm. like which was a lot of the argument and uh bevelheimer replied back that uh some money went towards new development in the midtown sure as well which you know if you're not on board with the with this at all you're not on board with it anywhere um which i think is it's a valid point as well uh but yeah i think this is better than the original proposal so kind of um we have to close the chapter at ish. some point. Yeah, we're going to have to close the chapter. I but do like have you more said, questions. checks and balances. Yeah. You never close a chapter on anything when it has Mm-mm. to do with um, government and yeah. our, our tax dollars. Yeah. And, and time will tell because, you know, nothing shakes out exactly the way it's supposed to. So I just want to know kind of contingency plans and mm-hmm. uh, yeah, the, the finality of the actual plan before it is put in place. So yeah, yeah, I think it's. I think it's uh, good that they're talking about it. Oh, the last thing I saw, they talked about raising, so the treasurer salary and um, the alderman salary, which here's what I'll say to naysayers about that. The last raise for the treasurer was in 2013. So if you don't think that inflation has hit huge on that, you're wrong. So I'm a full supporter of that. Um, Also a full supporter of the alderman because they've had to deal with more and more and more and more and more 
And um, I don't even think they get paid that much. Anyway. It's like a hundred dollars a meeting. I don't even think it's that. Is it, it? I, I don't know. But uh, when they're getting hit with with heavy issues like this sanctuary city mm-hmm. and the the um, cameras that are you know that's the heavy. biggest one. Uh, what you just said, the sanctuary city. Yeah. yeah, that's not something I think half these people signed up for. No, hell no. That's why I'm like, yes, they do deserve um, a pay raise. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that looks like. But kudos to um, kudos to the city for for looking at that. And I think it was Linda uh, who who brought that up. So get it, girl. Nice yeah. work. All right. Uh, is that it? I think that's it. All right. That was a good man. We really just <laughs> wrapped it up. Yeah. Hey, I think it, I think it was awesome. I missed you. I'm I, glad you're back. <laughs> and yeah, I think that does it for today's coffee, coffee talk. talk. See you next time.